Very, thank you. So if you have had the luxury of not realizing your phone is not turned down, now might be a good time to turn it to vibrate in respect of uh, Pamela's pre preparation and time that she's put into this. Uh, Pamela um, has been working for three years as a GI specialist for the facilities information system at the, um, the University of Massachusetts Lowell. She's got a bachelor's degree in geography that she w uh, got from Clark University and in 2014 she got a master's in GIS from Penn State. And uh, I know we're all very interested to hear her presentation, so we'll turn that over to her now. All right. So um, I'm the GIS specialist at UMass Lowell. I started there about three years ago. Um, so I'm just kind of getting the hang of the university life. <laughs> um, so let's get started. Just a few fun facts. Um, Last year, we graduated just, I mean, we had just over 18,000 students. Um, we have lots of majors to choose from, which um, draws a lot of students to our school, which is great. Um, we have over 2,000 faculty and staff, and just to give you a comparison, I'm in the Facilities Information Systems Department, and we're only four people. We are situated on three separate campuses. Um, in Lowell, they're all walking distance from each other, but we're not a connected campus. Um, and we are currently managing over 10,000 interior spaces across campus. On the left is our FIS vision, which was created in 2014 as part of a FIS master plan. And the, all the circles represent um, departments that depend on accurate facilities information or any system on or off campus that uh, uses our data. So there's a lot of collaboration going on and it didn't happen overnight. Um, lots of people before my time here have been working on um, helping departments understand what GIS is and how it can help them. And it's a constant um, two-way street between, you know, what can we provide you, what you know, what your needs are, and you know, us trying to come up with a way to help them using GIS. So I'm gonna start off by showing you our main uh, data sharing tool, which is our Campus Viewer. Um, we work with uh, Penn Bay Solutions to get this up and running um, and, and for space management. Um, it's only accessible if you are on our campus's network, and we have a public facing version and an internal version. Um, the public version is still only available on our network, so you have to have a student or a faculty email address to access it. Um, the public version just has our general base map and um, some building information, including floor plans. And I'm gonna walk you through some of the um, information that's on the secure version. So, we have a base map. Um, aerial imagery, which we just got flown this spring, uh, which is great because we've done a lot of construction projects and just another uh, base map. So, I will zoom in a little bit. Um, one of the big projects we've been working on the past two years is our utilities. We had them kind of mapped out, pieced together here and there from projects um, over the past, I don't know, 10 years maybe. Um, but we hired a consultant to come in and we gave them everything we had about our utilities. They con found the latest editions of everything and then went out and did field checks for us. So there's a lot of information going on with our utilities. Um, and you can choose to show one utility at a time, which is usually a little more manageable. Um, we also show some of our bigger capital projects that are going on. We're still working out the best way to, this, to display this data. Uh, right now, the capital projects point is kind of just placed in the building that the project is going on in. And you can click on it and get information about um, who the project manager is, if it's active, estimated start and end dates, which they're not always filled out. Um, let's see, if I click on a building, we get lots of building information, including 
um, area, ownership, um, and links to our building floor plans. So you can open these up and get a PDF really quick. Um, and our building archives, which is basically any document we found that has to do with the building. <laughs> um, we just hired a records manager who's also going to be helping us organize all of those documents. So I'm very excited about that. Um, you'll also see any of our AEP projects going on in, the, in that building. Um, oops, if I click again and I pick a floor. Once again, you get more information specific to that floor. Um, and we can also turn on all of our life safety data. Um, so that's helpful for um, our EEM department and police and EMTs uh, to have that up there. Um, then if we zoom in even more uh, and we click on a room, you get even more information. So right now, um, all the rooms are color coded. They're um, based on use. So greens are classroom, red is a uh, laboratory, and so on. Uh, we can also change that to show school. So if you need to know if a specific school is in a room, then you can find that out this way. Or you can click on the room and actually get this information down here. I like looking at it by use. Anyways, um, we have our room schedule, which has been very helpful for our planning department. Um, if they need to go and actually look at a space, uh, they can check the time. Uh, we've also started using this data for utilization studies. So that's been a, a hit. Um, any information about the classrooms, like capacity and the type of seating that's in the room is listed here. And we also have photos, which I will go into a little more detail, but we've been using the, um, the, Theta, the Ricoh Theta 360 camera to get photos of as many spaces as we can. So in a nutshell, that is our campus viewer. Now I'm going to walk through kind of how we acquire some of the data, who the users are, um, and some examples of some work we've done on, um, around campus. Um, oh yeah, we've also been getting requests from our users to add more and more data to our campus viewer, which we really want to do, but we're also in the process of updating to PennBase Envision 2018, which is their newest platform. So we kind of have to get that done first before we load in all of our data, because there's a lot. <laughs> Okay, so before I started at the university, all of our spaces were laser scanned, and that's how they got their original CAD drawings for all of our buildings. Um, at the same time, they gathered all the information about space use and schools um, using the FECOM guidelines. Um, today, our CAD specialist, who is also part of my four-person team, <laughs> uh, she manages and updates all the CAD drawings. Um, when projects are finished that we know about, she tries to get any documentation from the project manager. Um, she also, every summer, goes out and does field checks. Um, so we never see her over the summer because she's running around campus. <laughs> um, and that classroom schedule is very helpful for her too, so she knows when she can get into spaces. Um, once the CAD drawings are updated, we use the data interoperability extension in ArcMap to convert it to GIS while maintaining the correct coordinate system. And right now we're pulling um, information like the room numbers from our CAD drawings. So that all gets input into GIS. Um, Florentina, our CAD specialist, is also one of the biggest photographers on campus. Um, she runs around with a tripod and the 360 camera going into all the rooms. Um, and as of this year, we've kind of changed the process a little bit of how that's done. We used to have to take pictures with the camera, put them on the computer, rename the picture based on the room number, um, and then we could attach those pictures in the geodatabase to its correct room. So that takes time, and there's also a lot of room for human error. Uh, we started working with our web services team, and they created 
an app that you can use on right now only on Android devices um, for the 360 camera. So you pick, there's drop downs, you pick the building, you pick the room, you take the picture with the camera, and it uploads it into our new photo management um, database, which I will show you right now. And I'm also very excited about this. Um, so once you take a picture, the photos are automatically loaded into this. Um, we call it room capture. Um, and then once you're in room capture, you can select a building and then select a room. And there we have all of our photos, um, including a timestamp, um, the direct link to the photo. And then you can also see any 360 camera, uh, 360 photos down here. Um, and flat photos as well. So um, as you can see, we have 6,800 photos that we're managing right now. Um, and it's growing, like I think it grew like by 2,000 photos this year. So it's growing and we really needed a way to organize and maintain these photos. Previously, they were all stored as attachments in our geodatabase, which if you've ever worked with attachments, know that it can be quite cumbersome. <laughs> so um, this is another reason uh, why it's good to collaborate with different departments on campus. Um, and we were playing around with it the other day. Let's see if my link is still there. Yep, so we can use that direct link to a room um, down here, and we can click on it, and it brings you right to that room with all the photos for the space. So we haven't fully implemented it this yet, um, but it, it's coming soon. <laughs> Okay, next. So every year we also do an instructional space survey. We collect sp specific information about classrooms that helps our registrar when she's planning what classes will be in what room. We do it every year and until about two years ago it was done on paper, which was also not very efficient. Um, so we started using Survey123, which is an Esri app. Um, you can use it on your phone or your iPad or even on a computer. Um, it's very easy to set up and we were looking for a spreadsheet as our end result and it's very easy to pull a spreadsheet out of this. So it was the perfect solution. Um, we, the first year we did it, we tried to collect way too much information um, about anything and everything in every single room, <laughs> every single instructional space. So we've pared that down um, and tried to collect information for spaces we know that have changed um, or things that could change in a classroom like seating types, furniture, um, if it has an AC unit, does it work? Um, how many workstations there are that a student can actually sit at while they're in a class? So. All that information goes to the registrar's office. Um, she schedules all of her classes and then sends us back the information that we can then use on our campus viewer. So it's been a very good working relationship and it makes us keep our data up to date, which is great because a lot of people
Sorry about that. Um, our EMTs and police have used our data. We print them out campus maps and get them laminated so they can draw on them in their breakout rooms. Um, and we've piloted using Survey123 um, for them to do their daily checklists, which saves them paper and then all their records are stored in the cloud so they can look up a history of you know, who was on what shift this night um, from whenever they don't have to go through a stack of like 100 papers. So that's been going pretty well. Um, oh, and we've also been mapping out where security cameras are, which we're not allowed to really share with people except the police. So um, I feel kind of like, you know, top secret that I know where all the security cameras are. Um, our Bikes a problem on anyone else's campus because we get them attached to railings in front of doorways, um, you know, blocking people's pathways. So we created a collector app for our recreation department to monitor their bike racks. Um, it, will, it helps them plan where they might need a bike rack or where there's a bike rack that's not being used. And they have students that go out when they're walking around and say, uh, there's a bike on this stairway, maybe we need a bike rack there. Um, and they also can assess their condition and um, the type of bike rack that they have. So it's another department. Whew, I'm almost out of time. Okay. Um, so commencement is the one of the biggest events we have on campus, and there's a lot of coordination between a lot of different departments, as you can see. Um, I think this spring we had around 3,000 students graduate. So the students and their families and um, all the people involved in running commencement is a lot to coordinate. And we also have a morning and an afternoon um, session. So we have to do it twice in one day. Um, before 2016, this is how commencement was coordinated. Um, this picture doesn't really do it justice, but that binder is like thick. And these are the types of graphics that were in the binder. They're hard to read. They don't represent, you know, real life. <laughs> um, there's lot, there was lots of duplicates. Uh, so we saw this as a per perfect opportunity where GIS could help them out. Um, so we've made better maps for them, but we've also done a couple of online apps. One of them is parking for commencement day, and this is public facing, so any it's on their commencement website. Anyone can go look at it. Uh, we have the best routes to take to get on and off campus. Um, you can click on things and figure out, you know, parking on the street is $5, um, where parking garages are, and also where shuttle stops are that will bring you to and from the Sangha Center, which is where our main event happens. Um, there's also, we use the direction widget, which a lot of people like if they haven't been to campus before. We also did an internal app, which has a lot more information on it. Um, it has all the same parking information, but we have uh, police details. There'll be one officer here all day. You know, there'll be somebody here in the times that they'll be there. Um, we have the tents that will be set up. And if you click on them, it'll tell you what the tent is and what the size of it is. Um, and then we also have all the shuttle routes. But most importantly, we have the interior of the Sangha Center, which, come on, internet, um, which has a lot more information where people are supposed to be, how the seating is supposed to look, um, routes to walk through campus, uh, campus the Sangha Center, um, as well as uh, where police officers will be stationed, and then where all of our EMS stations are and what sections they're gonna be covering. So this is a lot of information that was in that big binder. Um, and it's uh, shared with the people who need it on the day of commencement. Um, it's easily ac accessible. You don't have to carry anything other than your phone or an iPad around to get to it. But if you really, really wanted to refer back to the operations guide or 
our emergency event plan. We have links to them as PDFs here, which you could open up. So we've been doing this for two years, or three years now, um, and it's been a great success. And once we had the initial app set up, they're pretty simple to update year to year because not a whole lot changes. Um, I think I'm almost done. Oh, and just looking ahead, um, our, some of our labs need to be renovated, so we're trying to coordinate with the planning department to see if there's anything we can do to help them out. Um, you know, CAD and GIS working together, we're starting to draw in our lab equipment and benches um, in our spaces, so when they're looking at our floor plans, they have a, a, a sense of what's in each room. Um, we just hired a records manager, which is great. Um, sometimes it takes me a really long time to find a specific drawing for a specific utility in a specific room. So um, we're really looking forward to have um, this, this guy help us organize and search better. Um, I mentioned before we want to do some utilization studies. So being able to take that schedule information that we get from the registrar and map it out and connect it to our buildings and spaces on campus will help us better understand why some spaces maybe are used more than others. Um, and finally, drones, which I'm hoping to be the pilot. Um, we're looking into <laughs> uh, getting one for our facilities department. There's a couple people interested in becoming pilots and there's a lot of interest from our operations and services department, especially um, to do uh, roof inspections, facade inspections. So that is on our list of things to do. Um, so basically, we are running around trying to keep our departmental collaboration up, uh, make our data available. Now we're running into how to maintain all this data that we have um, and just make sure everything's accurate and up to date. And that's it. Are there any questions? Yep. In landscape here, I was wondering, I don't know that I fully comprehend what all you guys have in GIS for landscape. Um, I can show you. So um, you can't click on anything in our base map, but all of this data, it has information attached to it in the attribute table. So we know that this is like a mulch bed that's this big that needs to be mulched in the fall and the spring. Okay, so it's a polygon and then, you know, the square footage. Yep. Um, yeah, and then we also have all of our trees on there. And our grounds manager just told me the other day he wants to start collecting all of our planting beds on campus and what's in them. So it's growing. <laughs> Um, right now, uh, she sends us a spreadsheet that we, that we import into our uh, SQL database. Um, uh, we would like our systems to talk. Right now they don't. There's always the security issues and firewalls and stuff, so it's just a copy right now. Yeah. Um, and that is actually something our web services team developed for us. Um, if you want more information about it, you can send me an email and I can try to explain or have one of our web services people explain what they did. Oh, I didn't mention that. Um, Mostly, I do all the apps using Esri tools. Um, a lot of them are out of the box, so it's, it's pretty easy to set up. I'm not a programmer, so one day maybe I will be, but right now I'm not. <laughs> um, so we have the one um, PenBay app, uh, but most of the time we use Collector, Survey123, or the Web App Builder. We are in facilities under the planning department. So, yeah, us, 
uh, planning, project management, and operations and services in FAS are all on the same floor of a building, and we're all under facilities. Yep. Me. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and interns, <laughs> when I can get them. <laughs> so. All right, well, thank you. <laughs>